I'm Ernie Shemizi and welcome to WVVH-TV special presentation from the Onishi Gallery here in New York. Today we have a very special exhibition for you. It's called Women Made in the South of Italy. It's the story of the women of San Luca, Italy and what they're doing in their town to change the image of the poverty and the crime that has gripped their part of Italy. So stay with us, you're gonna learn a lot about Italy today and the movement of powerful women to make that area of the world something that they can be proud of. the Ornishi Gallery, and this is the site of a very special exhibition this evening, and I'm with the gallery owner, Nana Ornishi, and that's, thank you for inviting us to your gallery. Yeah, thank you for coming. We're here in New York, and let's talk a little bit about your gallery, and then let's talk about this very, very special exhibit here this evening. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your gallery first. Yes, uh, my, my gallery focuses on Japanese craft art and Japanese art. Come from Japan. And uh, we normally show Japanese artists, but this is a very special exhibition that uh, we inviting uh, Italian artists from uh, San Luca. This is a very special exhibition. In fact, mm -hmm. our viewers are going to learn a lot about, mm -hmm. about this exhibition and the importance, but it's a very, very serious subject. How yes. did you come to bringing this exhibition, which is called Double X, as in double X chromosome, women, double X women, made in the south of Italy? Uh, one of the organizers, Pamela Cento, I have known her for two years. Uh, we had a show with her two years ago, and since then um, we've been having group shows, including her. And uh, we like to do uh, not only having Japanese artists, but also uh, international artists here. And uh, we haven't known this uh, concept until very recent. And something like uh, two months ago, I found out what this show is about. And uh, the first impression was I was kind of scared because it's about mafia and uh, nobody wants to show you know, artworks about mafia. Then I, I thought um, uh, this show has international importance and uh, uh, I believe this is my role in providing the venue for the very first time showing artworks that uh, influenced by those women's courage. I, I'm from Japan, and in Japan there are so many uh, Yakuza people, and uh, we have uh, so many good films about Yakuza in Japan, and uh, we, we see them on TV and in the film, and we, we feel they are so cool. And I think Italy too, we have Godfather and uh, The Sopranos, and uh, those like mobsters on TV and film, like we feel very cool, you know, very powerful, nice looking guys, but in fact, they make crimes. So we really have to uh, stop the crime. I think um, this is the best way to uh, let people know, um, let people be aware of what they do, and uh, we can change it little by little, I think. Wonderful. For the benefit of our viewers, your location and your website, please. Uh, yeah, we are located on uh, 521 West 26th Street, uh, which is between uh, 10th and 11th Avenue. And uh, our website is www.onishigallery.com.
face of Italy is changing, and it's changing through the courage of its women. And I'm joined by a very special lady, Rosie Ganale, who's started the San Luca women's movement. But your story and your courage, taking on organized crime, helping the women of this town in, in Italy, is a great story. But we want to hear this in your own words, and welcome to New York. Okay, thank you. Oh, um, my story is um, that I had a discotheque in uh, Calabria, in Reggio Calabria, and I worked for like nine years, and then uh, we had a lot of success. But then uh, um, it arrives a time that uh, someone decided that we had to stop. And uh, for one year, I keep on working, but they made a lot of bad things to me and to my cars, to my, my discotheque. And um, I don't know the right word in American, but it's uh, something like every day, something bad to you, like a cut on the car, uh, on the hood, you know? Things like this. And after one year, Someone came to me and said that perhaps I have to put drug uh, among the, the person in my discotheque because they have to sell this, no? And I said that it was impossible because I, I'm a good person and I have my child and I, I believe in God and things like this. And this is uh, not a thing for me. I can work in these things. And um, after one week, they wait for me when I finish working and um, take a gun and uh, show me the gun and then uh, take me and uh, hit me, you know? And they break all my, broke all my teeth and my arms and my leg. So it, it took quite one year just to keep on walking again, to move my arm, my hand and uh, to be like um, in life again because uh, uh, when it happens things like this something of you inside it just like died you know so you have to burn again and this was in san luca no this was in reggio in reggio, in reggio. Right, for the benefit of our viewers who are not aware of uh, italian geography reggio calabria is the toe area of Italy, you would say the bottom part, the, yeah. the toe area. Yeah. And within that area, it's an area of great beauty, yeah. wonderful people, people yeah. with a heart, people with a soul. But unfortunately, the mafia yeah. has taken root in that part of Italy with the poverty and the closeness of the family that exists there. But there's a new word, uh, mafia doesn't really, isn't the word that brings fear to these people. Say that word, the new word of describing it's Andraketa. Andraketa, is that? Andrangheta. So you know Andra that. Say it again. Andrangheta. Andrangheta. Now that's a word which our viewers probably have never heard, but that word brings more fear yeah. to organized crime than any other word that you can describe. Yeah. Mere mention of it yeah. can get someone uh, hurt. Uh, you know that um, there is a different uh, kind of a criminal organization. Um, the, organiza the criminal organization of Sicily is called Mafia. But perhaps in America, when you hear Mafia, you think that it's all the Mafia. You think of the Sopranos, yeah. you think of Hollywood loves yeah. uh, Italian stereotypical organized crime people i know that but this is the real the real thing now yeah this is life this is life and you know that in calabria there is another criminal organization that is called drangheta and um, people know that uh, this is the m most uh, how can i say to you powerful yeah powerful Control in all drugs the, yeah they're the people who bring drugs in from Latin America and distributed in all of yeah. Europe. Yeah. They have become the leaders. Yeah. And their violence has expanded now beyond yeah. Italy. It wasn't there a, a murder of six, a massacre of, of six Italians in Germany? Yeah. It was a bad, very, very bad things, not only for us, 
but uh, for for all Italy, because you know that when something happens, the 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 fame of uh, our country go around the world for these bad things and perhaps American people think that all the Calabrian people are like bloody and bad person things like this and but this it's is what not they true. feel in Italy don't they when they think of southern Italy when they think of Calabria the Italian people themselves yeah. have a very negative attitude when it comes to yeah. being Calabrian now we've I think we've done a good job at painting the dark side that there's this organization centered primarily in San Luca which is a town in southern Italy in in uh, Calabria 18 kilometers from Reggio from uh, the big city of Reggio see see it's 18 kilometers south from Reggio now in this atmosphere of of violence and death and all of these negative things you come forward and create the San Luca women's movement. Yeah. After you were beat up by these people, after they tried to kill you, after they drove you out of business, you spent a year in the hospital recuperating, you came back yeah. with the courage of, you're not a big person, uh, <laughs> no, I'm Rosie. No, <laughs> In Italy, my friend called me the pocket <laughs> because they say that I'm too small and I put in the pocket. And this uh, <laughs> amazing lady has created an organization yeah. and the benefit of this organization, the purpose is to band women together yeah. to show the good face yes. of Calabria yes. and the good women of Calabria yes. and also women that are standing up to, again, let's pronounce it, Ndrangheta? Ndrangheta, yes. Ndrangheta, Ndrangheta. Okay. yes. Um, after what happened to me, I stayed like two years in a big depression because I didn't find any straight to go on because what happened, it was too strong for me because violence, when you feel on your skin, is something that not only touch your skin, but touch your soul. So you have to work on you and find every day a good reason to wake up and uh, to fight, to, to go on. So after these two years, and uh, when happened the tragedy of Duisburg, where six, six persons were killed, I said, I have to make something for my homeland and because I went away from Reggio and I went to live in Rome. So I was alone with no family, with no friends, in a stranger city. I didn't know the street and it was very hard for me this. So I said, I have to make something for my homeland and I want to come back and perhaps the street that I feel in this moment can help other women that live violence and no violence on their skin. So I go there and I knew all these uh, women with the child. I work in the school with them and, uh, and then I put the, all them together and with the women came also the men because they wanted to know who was this person that make all these troubling things in this small village. And it was a great experience because I know that um, after all that people say and newspaper write that most of all is uh, not so good things or reality things, I know that this person has got a very big heart. I know this. Beautiful. So you've helping these women with their natural talents in, in art and what they've been able to create, you've given them an opportunity to earn money, yes. to sell their crafts, yes. to get free from the economic binds that hold them back. Because if you stand up against this mafia group in yeah. San Luca, they will destroy you, you won't, you won't have, you'll be isolated, you won't have any food, any, uh, the poverty would be uh, yes. your fate, but you're giving them a way out. And in the process, by empowering them financially through their crafts and telling their story, they now have the money, the, the resources to say no to yeah. this group. Rosie, we're joined by a very special person, aren't we? Yeah. Please introduce. 
Pamela Gento is, first of all, a friend of mine, but she's a great artist. She's the artist of the pixel in Italy, but um, she's known all over the world because she had a particular technique to make a picture with the pixel. And she also was made a curator of this uh, exposition. So, Pamela, you are the curator. You put together mm -hmm. all of these beautiful artists mm. and photographers. Now, there are 13 photographers yeah. and are they all from Calabria? Allora, se sono tutti fotografi no. e sono eh, tutti calabresi, sono 13. Non sono tutti calabresi, assolutamente, ci sono due calabresi, gli altri sono romani, alcuni sono venuti da Parigi o da altre parti del mondo e ci sono non solo fotografi ma anche videoartisti. So, they are not from uh, Calabria. Just uh, two of them are from Calabria, the others are from Italy, and one came from Paris. And they are not only photographers, but also video artisti. Video artists, you know? Video art. It's a very dramatic work that you've presented here. These are women that normally are not um, artists. They're real mm -hmm. uh, Calabrian women. And it's, a, it's very moving, this particular uh, exhibition which you've created. Cioè è un'esperienza un molto romantica, è molto strana perché solitamente non viene mai mostrato il volto onesto delle donne calabresi. Infatti questa esposizione non vuole negare che c'è anche il lato oscuro, ma vuole proprio portare avanti la solarità di queste donne, il coraggio di queste donne che vogliono mostrare anche l'altra faccia della Calabria. They do want to show another face of the women of Calabria, that they're strong, that they're loving but that they're powerful. And this is a message for the entire world to, yeah. to see. These are the, the photo of this exposition that is a project that we made just to show the good face of all the women of San Luca. These are the women that work with me in my movement. And uh, for the first time, we took the picture of this woman with their want. They wanted to have this picture because, you know, a lot of times journalists come to San Luca and just stolen the picture without asking to anybody. And that perhaps they put this picture on the newspaper um, that uh, speak about bad things. So you see your face behind bad things, right, you know? So we say we don't want this. We just want the good face of the, the and women. who's in this picture? Oh. Who would be here? This is uh, Teresa, that she works in, um, um, <laughs> in our organization, in the office. She's Antonia. She's very good for organize. She's another Teresa. She's my vice presidente. And uh, Saveria is um, the teacher of antico telaio, you know, the traditional... Uh, uh, yes, the yarn and... Uh, say. Yes. Yes. And uh, it's me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're in the center as the president. <laughs> yeah. They wanted to take this speech, but I don't like it so much. <laughs> That's true. It looks a little bit like the Last Supper. I hope yeah, not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this photo. Uh, this is uh, like a glamour photo. You know that uh, it's very particular because uh, she's like a dea, you know, like a Greek dea. And, um, it's very, uh, it's got a great uh, meaning because... And is this the architecture one would find? In what, what town would this be in uh, Calabria? What town? Uh, this is San Luca. This is in this San is Luca. This is the old town of San Luca, you know? And uh, this has a great meaning, I say, because uh, this, like, means a river of blood that perhaps sometimes in San Luca happened. And she came from the dark and has got the, the veil. face, yeah, with the veil. And then she moved the veil, showed the face, the face is smiling, and the sun take her face, you know? So it's a so good, very hopeful. Yeah, very hopeful. Now this yeah. black and white photo yeah. is, uh, we always see the wine glasses, the <laughs> smile. Did the, And the, this is the lady who, on working on her loom created yes. this uh, piece. All the stuff she made with her hand. She worked in this uh, antico telaio 
from since she had like 13 years old. And that's an industry that's been part of uh, Southern Italy, Calabria for the silkworm and um, and utilizing the, the yarn and weaving. See, uh, yes, it's um, like a, an ancient tradition that uh, in the south of Italy is very strong, but now Nowadays, it's difficult to find someone that really uh, works very good. So she's very, she's Antonia. Well, she's, Antonia looks like a powerful lady. Yeah, she's a very powerful lady. She has got a great, great soul. She's a strong, very, very strong woman. Now, this is an interesting photo. Yeah, she's Maria. Maria, she's very, very, uh, like, um, how can I say to you? She wants to be an actress, and in this photo, she's a really actress, I think. So, you know, uh, perhaps sometimes you think that if you take a person and you put this person in a situation, it could be everyone, you know? If you take Maria to Hollywood, she could be an actress. But if you leave um, Maria in San Luca, she will never be anything. So. For this I say that the village is forgotten because there is nothing. So if you don't give them the possibility to have a, an alternative way, they will stay always there, forgotten and making nothing, you know? Well, everyone knows those great tomatoes in the back. <laughs> this is the most famous tomato from Calabria, you know? Because the sun get like dry and during the winter you put on the fire mm -hmm. and make a very good thing to it. Right. Sun-dried tomatoes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's Antonia. The we of before, very strong and she cooks very well. So in this photo behind you, she's emerging from the shadows. Yes. She's becoming, you know. She was nothing because to be in San Luca sometimes you are nothing and then you want to be someone and arrive. She's Aurelia, and uh, this is a particular picture because this is water. It's like the water that get purified, yes? All the things. So it wash everything, all the bad things, and the yellow is the sun, and the blue is the sky. So now Aurelia is one of your uh, subjects of this uh, exhibition. Yeah. And, um, this is another photograph of Aurelia, Same. and she's here with us tonight. I know she doesn't speak any English, but her story, she's representative of the women of, uh, of Calabria who are now using their art to bring themselves to economic uh, independence. You know, I think that women are the base of the family and of the society, you know? so. I think that the very, the, the really change will start from the women. And Aurelia is a person that I always say to her that perhaps she wouldn't stay in San Luca because she's a, a miles ahead from the, the village. She's a person that has got really um, courage, dream, she is proud, she's a very good person. Her eyes in this photograph are piercing and her smile. Yeah. And um, this witness of the highest is like touch the heart, you know? And here there is right con gli occhi della memoria with the eyes of the memory, memory. you know? And you see the eyes. It's like that in these eyes she see all the life that had before, but not not only for herself, but for all the village. It just like she saw all what happened and uh, she smiles, so it's positive, but she has a, like a sadness in these eyes for what happened. The eyes are important to this exhibition. Yeah. And here's another beautiful photograph. Yeah. Oh, this is Teresa. So you see that, as I told you before, if you take a person, if you, you, you put this person in a particular situation, you can make a matrix or a model of everyone. She's really beautiful in this picture and uh, like simple, you know, and she's beautiful because it's simple. And the red is because you know that I told you that women from south of Italy always been made like a, a dark thing. We're black. Yeah. We don't want black. We just want red. 
So if someone thinks to, about the women of south of Italy in black, no, we put the red. And you're changing perceptions, and here's a very good example of being surrounded by, uh, by the red of these beautiful tomatoes. See. This is a typical picture of the women of south of Italy. The smile, the lines of the sacrifice, and all the red of the patient and of the things of the heart, you know? For the, the vegetables of the, our homeland, you know? So this is Calabria, the, the strength of this woman. Well, and not only is she the strength of the women of Calabria, but so are you. It's uh, really a thrill to meet you. Uh, you represent the new generation of Italian women, of Italian women of Calabria that want to reach out, have a better life for themselves yeah. and for their families and not to be mired in uh, the politics of, of crime and of all of the negative things that have been their history. Everyone knows the women of Italy, especially the women of Calabria, are very powerful women. Yeah. And to get them to change and feel empowered and move to the future. And you're representative uh, of that, Rosie Canali. We're very, very proud of your story. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you for being in New York. And We're joined by Benjamina Callepare. And Benjamina, you are from what town in Italy? I'm, what, I'm from uh, Bovalino, but I have um, many origins. Uh, from uh, Natile, my father was from Natile, my mother from San Luca. Uh, I'm uh, a woman of South Italy. <laughs> and this, welcome to New York, and this exhibition here at the Ornici Gallery in New York is about the women of Southern Italy, the women of San Luca, the women of Calabria, and you, you are all of the above. Being a woman from southern Italy, from that area, what are the challenges one faces, the difficulties living and being part of uh, that culture? Uh, the difficulty to live uh, in South yeah. Italy? Yeah. There's no job. Uh, the situation is uh, tragic. <laughs> uh, I'm graduated from uh, one year and I haven't a job uh, nowadays. Uh, South Italy <laughs> remains uh, very, very poor. Uh, there are uh, a, a few opportun opportunities for, for young people uh, who want to, uh, to become uh, an important person an important, and uh, to have an important job. Would an exhibition like this, will this help? Will it help by showing, uh, uh, putting a light on the conditions in, in Italy, in, in southern Italy, and how things could be made better? I hope so, because uh, for the first time, uh, uh, South Italy uh, is at the center uh, um, of the world for, uh, not for criminal events, but uh, uh, for um, a cultural events, uh, I hope uh, that uh, it's uh, an opportunity uh, to to show another phase of Calabria, uh, a good phase. Calabrian phases uh, are good phases. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at this exhibition here at the Ornici Gallery of Women Made in the South of Italy. For WVVH-TV, I'm Ernie Shemizi.